Okay, well, my name is Christine Janis, and um, I was a professor of uh, ec ecology and evolutionary biology at Brown University for over 30 years, and now I'm officially retired, and I'm, I'm an honorary professor at the University of Bristol in England. Okay, Christine, how did you um, get interested in vertebrate paleontology? I was taken to see Fantasia when I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. And, you know, back then there was n nothing about paleontology, nothing. I mean, there was, you know, a one book, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I thought I was, I was, I was going to like dinosaurs, but then, then that one book my parents bought me, like, the next month, had pictures of some of these North American endemic ruminants that I, that I now work on, and I was sort of captivated by them, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, next, tell us a little bit about your, um, over the course of your career, your research has taken different directions, and maybe tell us something about some of your contributions. Oh, I was, I was thinking about, about this. I, I, think, I think what um, two things that really interested me is sort of the correlation between form and function, so how you can use the form of extinct animals to, to try and determine their behavior. Mm -hmm. And also this idea about how much of what we see in evolutionary patterns um, is r related to climate and environmental change. And that's a sort of common idea now. Mm -hmm. And of course, it, it was an idea that like William Matthew had back in you know, 1912, but it really wasn't that common when I started off. It, it was always seen as being like you know, some sort of progression in evolution, mm -hmm. rather than how things could change if the climate changed and everything else. Mm -hmm. so. Let's see. In the course of, I know you have mentored students certainly, um, but you yourself, I'm sure, had had mentors. And maybe you want to tell us a little bit about it, identify a mentor or two. Not really. I mean, my my supervisors at Harvard were were okay, but they weren't particularly mentorish. I think <laughs> um, the person who actually was the best mentor for me was when I went to Oregon State University for a year mm -hmm. um, in the middle of doing a PhD. I was trying to keep together a relationship with somebody. It didn't work out. But um, but Art Bucco at Oregon State University because he was really into the whole thing of paleoecology. It was mm -hmm. sort of a new thing then, and he was he was also you know, really supportive mm -hmm. and enthusiastic, and, mm -hmm. and that was good. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, though, it's been hard to find people who are, mm -hmm. can help you that much, you know? Yeah. Um, well, let's, let's kind of stay on that a little bit um, in terms of what advice, if somebody came to you and, and said they were interested in VP, what advice would you give to a student based on your own experiences? Um, well, if it's, you know, if it's the only thing in life that you really, really want to do, then go for it, but it's hardly a cushy or easy path to follow. Right. <laughs> I mean, you do get to do what you wanted to do when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we can't all, we can't all become, become ballerinas or firemen, but we can become <laughs> paleontologists. And that's, and, that, and that's a career that lasts longer. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. age 40, mm -hmm. you're, just, you're just getting into your, not me, when, when one is age 40 mm -hmm. in paleontology, you're just getting into your stride, whereas, it, whereas you're sort of washed up as a ballerina. So, I mean, it has a mm -hmm. much greater legs, mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in the course of your career, have you come across, I mean, I'm sure you've been um, confronted various challenges um, and you've overcome them and maybe there's a couple that you want to share with us? Funnily enough, I think it was easier when people were overtly sexist in some way because you could then address that and you could then show that you could think like a man kind of thing, you know. <laughs> because you could, whereas now I think People believe it's all equal still, but it really isn't. Mm -hmm. And not, I mean, it's, it's better than it was, of course it is. Yes. But in some way, it was easier when it was more overt. Because um, mm -hmm. it was clearer. It was clearer, and then you could address that particular issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, w w when I first went to, to Harvard, I was told I had two things against me because uh, I, was, I was English and I was a girl, and both, and both types had failed in the past, and I was a combination of the two. <laughs> not very helpful. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, but it made me determined to stick it out, <laughs> whatever, you know. Um. Yeah, well, one thing I, w I did want to ask you, because I know you've been going to SVP. Uh, do you remember your first meeting? Yes, it was actually at Harvard. And that was? When? 1976. 1976. And I, my best memory is Lee Van Valen doing his, doing his dinosaur sex song at the, <laughs> at the <laughs> Yeah, I think I remember that. It was a banquet, <laughs> yeah. But if you were to kind of, as a comparative biologist, kind of compare what the meetings were like then compared to what you've seen now, oh, what would you 
what, do you, what, it, what comes out? It was manageable. You could meet people, you could talk. Now it's just so big and so impersonal. And uh, I mean, it, obviously, it, 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 it isn't as big as things like GSA. Mm -hmm. But I think it's much harder to, to, to make connections now than it was back then. What about the so science big. that's oh, being... Oh, science, science. Well, I'm just saying, no, no, that's obviously okay. what you said is true. But I mean, what about people presenting and... Hmm. Well, there was a, it, it's a lot more prof professional now. Mm -hmm. there, are a lot, there are a lot fewer things that, like, uh, I found this thing on the ground somewhere, and, and <laughs> what the hell is it, you know? Um, but also, it's because, as well as being more, more professional, it's sort of become less about the organisms and more, uh, more about the techniques, which I find a bit depressing. But I mean, it's ma now, you know, I mean, SVP is obviously now a hugely professional, successful uh, society, which is very different to the sort of amateurist, um, cosy way mm -hmm. it was before. Well, how does it compare? I know you, um, you're in England now. Does it, do you go to the SVPCA? The um, yes, um, not, not that often. Mm -hmm. SVPCA is much smaller and mm -hmm. does feel more like the old, the old days of SVP so in that informal. sense. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, really, the last question is just, is there anything we haven't discussed about vertebrate paleontology that, that you want to, an experience that you want to share with, with others? Well, the one thing I would like to sort of share is like, in this day when there's so many techniques, both sort of computational, mathematical, um, things like, you know, scans and everything, and, it's gr and they're great, they're giving us information of, in the things that we couldn't possibly know otherwise. Mm -hmm. Um, it's still really important to know your organisms and know your data. Mm -hmm. Because these techniques, they can give you results, but they can't give you the questions. Right. And, they can't yeah, and they can't give you the interpretations. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I would think, you know, yes, it's important to, to learn R. It's also important to have, have a good stack of pencils and backs of envelopes to work things out on as well. Mm -hmm. Know what you expect to find first. Understand the animals. Mm -hmm and the bones and everything, and then you can use those techniques mm -hmm. to, their, to their best advantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, instead of the techniques driving the, yes. the, the question, yes. really. You have to start with a question first, yeah. And you have to also n know what to expect, mm -hmm. more or less. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how can you tell if it's all something forever? Because you, get some sort of, you can get some very uh, precise results out, mm -hmm. but you have to somehow know that that's going in the right direction. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much, Christine. Okay.